Jai Radha Madhava Kunjapi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjapi Hari Gopi Janavallava Giri Vardhanhari Gopi Janavallava Giri Vardhanhari So we're coming towards the final three verses of the chapter called Ideal Family Life. Oh yeah, we got Mahaprasadam for everybody if you stay for the end of the class. And if you ask a question, you get two. How's that? <laughs> it's 
good stuff. <laughs> okay. Tator Chayam Harim Kechit Samsara Samsadhyaya Saparyaya Upasata Upastapi Nartada Purushodvisam Tato Chayam Harim Kechit Samsradaya Saparyaya Upasata Upastapi Nartada Purusha Dvisham Tator Chayam Harim Kechit Samstradaya Saparyaya Upasata Upastapi Nartada Purusha Disam Ladies, do it together, chat together. Tata, thereafter. Archayam, the deity. Harim, who is the supreme personality of Godhead? The form of the Lord, being identical with the Lord. Kechit, someone. Samstradaya, with great faith. Saparyaya, and with the required paraphernalia. Upasate, worships. Upasta api, although worshiping the deity, with faith and regularity. Na, not, artada, beneficial, purusha dvisham, for those who are envious of Lord Vishnu and his devotees. Translation. Sometimes a neophyte devotee offers all the paraphernalia for worshiping the Lord, and he factually worships the Lord as the deity. But because he is env envious of the authorized devotee of Lord Vishnu, the Lord is never satisfied with his devotional service. Mm. Purport. Deity worship is especially meant for purifying the neophyte devotees. Actually, however, preaching is more important. In Bhagavad Gita 1869, it is said, 
Nachatasmam Manusheshu Kastin May Priyat Krita Maha. If one wants to be recognized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he must preach the glories of the Lord. One who worships the deity must therefore be extremely respectful to the preachers. Otherwise, simply worshiping the deity will keep one in the lower stage of devotion. Om Agyan Timiram Dasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Nirina Tasmai Sri Guru Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirase Sasunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakopa, Thru Vischa, Kripa Sindhu, Bevacha, Patitanam, Bhavane, Bhu, Vaishnave, Bhu, Namaho, Namaha, Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadar, Srivasadi, Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hmm. <coughs> says that one who is worshiping the deity, if, if he doesn't see that same deity in the hearts of all the all living entities, that same person he's worshiping on the altar, then he is simply going through some the motions. He's not really worshiping the deity. So that same Lord who is sit, situated on the altar is in the hearts of all living entities. So therefore, deity worship really means to not only to perform the activities of deity worship, but to see the Lord within the hearts of others. And here, it's especially given some emphasis here that for the sake of purification, then the step-by-step -step process of devotional service unfolds. And this purification here is, is described as uh, deity worship. So what does it mean by deity worship? Those who actually go onto the altar and perform the activities, or those who assist in the activities of deity worship, that's also deity worship. And so that's here, I think it's mentioned in the, in the previous verses that in order for people to get away from the materialistic concept of life, that those who are performing devotional service, or at least beginning to perform, the Lord has manifested himself in the form of his deity. So we can see him, we can worship him, we can perform personal service to him as we would perform personal service to a young boy or a child within the family. We wake him up, we uh, offer nice foodstuffs to them, dress him, uh, put him to rest. Everything that's done with a, like a family member who is dependent. So in the same way, the Lord accepts that role. Oh, he's not, although he is not dependent, he accepts that in order for our purification. So deity worship is a real form of compassion shown by the Lord for the, uh, for the devotee who is aspiring to make progress in devotional service. It's purifying. And purifying in the sense that it helps you regulate your life, and it also helps you to focus your attention on the Lord in his transcendental form, which helps to bring about, or helps to destroy actually, the lower qualities of ignorance and passion. But here it says that those who do worship the deity but don't preach, can also get benefit if they recognize and are extremely, as Prabhupada says here, respectful to the preachers. Because our movement, it's a preaching movement. It's not a movement for simply flipping chapatis and having a good time inside the temple. It's for inviting the conditioned souls to take part in the same process. And so that is our real focus and our main focus. So everything we do I was just remembering one devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, your Guru Maharaj, referring to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, uh, he, would do, he would 
he would do anything for the preaching. And Prabhupada said, yes, he said in a very animated way. To help us understand that this is our, this is our movement. Our movement is about making more and more conditioned souls into liberated souls. In other words, giving them the opportunity, the same opportunity that we had, to come to the real goal of life, which is Prema Pumartha Maha, to awaken one's natural love for the Supreme Lord. And so preaching is, uh, sometimes that word has a certain connotation to it, and it kind of limits people to, to think in terms of what it means. But preaching really means to uh, change the heart of someone towards Krishna. We use the general word preaching, means talking philosophical terms, or per performing certain programs which are outreach to bring people in. But preaching can also be done for those who are not actively out there in preaching if they develop the mood of preaching. And that means that anyone who comes into the temple should be welcomed, given a chance to understand what is going on, and should be uh, you know, given all facilities so they can learn about devotional service. There's one story that um, this goes back way to the beginning of our Krishna conscious days. I don't know exactly where it happened. Some the persons who tell the story say it happened in Europe somewhere. But the devotees were in the temple and there was one lady, she was coming into the temple and she came in with a mini skirt on. So it's not really the proper dress to be in, in the temple. But that was her, that was her, her way of dressing. So the devotees told her that, you know, we welcome you here, but if you come, you should dress differently, you should dress more, you might use the word demurely, <laughs> more ch chastely. Uh, in other words, cover your body, that's basically it. <laughs> so um, she listened, but the next time she came, she came again in the miniskirt. <laughs> And this time the devotees were a little stronger. And uh, they kind of heavied her out a little bit and warned her that this is, you can't do this. <laughs> you know, trying to describe how important it is to dress properly in front of the Lord. So, but she was attached. And then she came again, same way. And they heavied her out this time and she said, I'm not coming back anymore. <laughs> so she decided not to come. So then, she was living some, somewhere near the temple and somehow she had heard that the, the teacher was coming, Prabhupada. So he was coming. So she thought, well, I'll go and I'll meet their teacher. So Prabhupada came and he, had, he just sat down on his Vyasa son. He was giving his opening, what they say, welcoming lecture. She walks in, same way, <laughs> with the mini skirt find some place to sit down. And Prabhupada turns to her, he looks at her, he said, oh, thank you for coming. You look so nice today. <laughs> Completely melted her heart. <laughs> she was just practically in tears how Prabhupada treated her, just like, a, you know, everybody else was heavy in her out. <laughs> Prabhupada just, just opened up her heart so nicely. That night, she went home and took down her hair and, and got rid of her miniscoat and said, if this pleases the devotees, then I'll do it. Mm -hmm. She did it, not because anybody forced her, because Prabhupada showed genuine affection to her. That's preaching. <laughs> That's preaching. Mm -hmm. Changing people to somehow become favorable in Krishna consciousness. Of course, it is a certain technique that has to be practiced, and as you learn, you know pretty much what to do in different situations, but it's an example of how preaching is. Just like we see on these walls, we see all these beautiful paintings of Krishna and his different leelas and Lord Chaitanya and all his associates. This is also preaching in the sense that people come and they get, they get as Prabhupada said, a window into the spiritual world. 
That's what he said, that these paintings are windows into the spiritual world. So that's also a form of preaching by awakening people's understanding to the transcendental form of the Lord in, in, in a very artistic way, depicting his different leelas. So there are so many different forms of outreach and preaching that one can do. But it's recommended here that one should, and Prabhupada doesn't say it exactly, but he actually, he actually said, he does say it. He said, this is a preaching movement and preaching is more important. So he wanted each and every devotee in our movement to somehow or other be an instrument to reach out to the conditioned souls in one form or another. So that may take the form of doing something directly, or it may take the form of getting involved in, in some other program that is also going on that uh, is geared to reaching out. Imagine if every devotee in our movement was engaged in some form of preaching, how fast this movement would exp Because there's people out there, they're waiting. They don't know what they're waiting for, but they're waiting for something to fall into their life that they can actually find happiness and fulfillment on. So if we're, if we're not out there, there's nobody to reach those persons. But out there means different ways, of course. We do Harinam, we do book distribution, and we do various types. But Prabhupada wanted the temples to be uh, places where people could come and learn the philosophy. They could come, they could hear classes. Prabhupada said the classes should go on all day. <laughs> Really, it, you can, you, I, you, there's an actual statement where he probably said, Prabhupada said, glasses should go on all day and people can come in, the devotees can also learn like that. But Prabhupada had a big vision for preaching, he was always thinking. And he said if people come to the temple and if they don't hear the philosophy and don't really meet the devotees, then you know, we're actually doing them an injustice. Because Krishna sends people. He says, oh, why don't you go to the Hare Krishna temple? Well, maybe you should check it out and see what they have. Oh, oh. It's different ways Krishna will inspire someone who is new to come to the temple. Maybe they met someone or they have a friend like that. I remember when I was preaching in D.O.B., Dob. You know Dob, right? Yeah. It's a prison. So uh, when I went there in a couple times, and each time we went, uh, we went with, we went with a large group of devotees. I think you were with me one time, right? And a few other devotees. And uh, one people said, "Oh, there's my friend from school. <laughs> He's a Hari Krishna." <laughs> it's happened a few times, you know. <laughs> so I mean, Slovenia is kind of small, so. <laughs> Everybody knows everybody, almost. <laughs> so they were seeing their friends. And I remember we went to this other jail. It was in uh, Maribor. And uh, who was our, that girl who used to be here? She was the temple commander. Kalavati. Kalavati, yeah. So we went, Kalavati was there, and there was one inmate, he said, oh, and he called her by her regular name, I don't know what he called her, he said, nice to see you again, you remember when we were going to school, to, you know, I sound like, <laughs> she, she was a little embarrassed, she didn't want to get too, you know, connected with that personality. <laughs> so we had many, uh, so I mean, that, that inspires people, and that person, actually, I think it was him or someone else who had a connection with the devotees, they came to the temple after they got out. Huh? Celia, that's what it was, Celia, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Because when you go to jail in Slovenia, you don't stay in jail long. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> Usually you don't, unless you... There was hardly anybody who was really heavy criminals we met. Everybody, you know, somebody stole a car. <laughs> Or somebody ran over somebody with their car. <laughs> or, you know, there was one jail we went to, and there was no guards and no, no gates and no bars. It was a weekend jail. 
<laughs> so we were inquiring what kind of, you know, kind of uh, crimes that these people commit. Well, you know, some traffic violations, <laughs> couldn't pay the fine. <laughs> so we were there and, and uh, the idea was that the, you stay there during the week and if you want, you can go home on the weekend. And so m most people don't go home because the jail's so nice anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just, you know, so we went there a few times. And that was a good jail because we were, we were able to do care time. We distributed many books. You remember that place where they had the chickens and... <laughs> Maybe you don't remember that. I forgot the name of that place. It was really a remote place. So yeah, it's just, well this, so I just wanted to somehow connect that with the idea of preaching because there are so many ways that one can think of how to reach out to conditioned souls. You can do it by writing, you can do it by preaching through the internet, you can preach through various types of media, that's also good. Or you can distribute books, you can, the conventional ways, the ones, the ways that everyone does it. But one time we gave a class, I gave a, a seminar, it was not only a class, on preaching. And we came up with 35 different ways that you could reach out to people and it would all be within the category of preaching like that. So it's, the reason I'm bringing that out is sometimes people say, oh, preacher, means, oh man, I have to study the books, I have to learn, I have to learn how to speak to people. I'm so scared when I get up in front of everybody, I turn colors and I get red and I shake and I fall off the seat. You know? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah, so people get this, you know, this stage fright when they have to think, oh, to be a preacher means to, you know, to speak in front of an audience. But that's one way, but there are others. There's so many, what we say, opportunities. And this is how our movement will actually go on like that. Because as soon as we relegate preaching to anything less than first class, our movement will become like the rest of many of the religious societies. Well, simply by be looking for getting money from people from the outside in order to improve our situations within the temples, or we'll be, or we'll be getting comfortable, or we'll just be doing welfare work for people in general. Or we'll do it. Preaching has to be the first thing and the main thing. And that inspires, as Prabhupada quotes this first from the Bhagavad Gita, na chatasman manushe shu kaschid me priyatkrita maha. That and Krishna says there's no one who is more dear, nor there anyone be more dear, who one who preaches his message to the devotees. So this is Krishna speaking this directly. So to Prabhupada said, if you want to be recognized by Krishna, actually he says it the other way. He says, those who preach are automatically recognized by the Supreme Lord. And if you, rec you get recognized by God, that means you, you're getting a lot of mercy like that. So, and one can also behave ideally following all the regulative principles and learning all the Vaishnava etiquette principles and that is also, in one sense, a form of preaching. Sanatana Goswami said to uh, Srila Haridas Thakur, he said, some people preach, but their behavior is not so good, or not, uh, not ideal. And some are, they behave very well, but they don't preach. But then he said, you are the ideal, you are the perfect devotee, you are preaching and your conduct is, the, is, you know, Vaishnav conduct. So to combine both of them, that is the actual, you know, perfection to preach and to develop the, the proper conduct and behavior. And that, is, and that sets an example for others simply by seeing that and people are inspired by that. And just, just to meet a devotee like that is uh, they become benefited by that. 
So there's so many ways that we can uh, think and how to uh, become part of what is going on in the preaching or if we're not, want to get directly involved with that, think of ways by which we can, you know, show mercy to the conditioned souls. Jai Shisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Uh, distributing Krishna Prashadam. That's for those who live in the Grihasta Ashram. It is mandatory that they distribute Prashadam every day to some living entities, whether it's dogs or any kind of a animals or anything, uh, or the human beings. Prashadam distribution is a requirement, it's a regulative principle for those who live in the Grihasta ashram, to help the one become detached from the idea of manasam, chanasam oham yamam ham mameti, that this is my home, this is my wife, this is my husband, this is my uh, children, all of the I and my principles that come along with having an extension of oneself in the form of these, these different forms of paraphernalia. Because that keeps one on the material platform, or at least keeps one on the material consciousness, the idea of I and mine. And preaching helps you to, to get over that, because by preaching, you see that what I'm giving is not something that is coming from me. It's coming from a greater source. And I am simply the instrument for that source to give to, to bring that source to others. And that is the reason Krishna wants everyone, the Supreme Lord, especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wants to make the whole world Krishna conscious. In fact, he wants to make all the universes Krishna conscious. He has a strong desire. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya's desire is really strong. To keep up with it is it's not possible. But this is his, so anyone who is, uh, is in any way connected with that mood of Lord Chaitanya to reach the conditioned souls. Taktva deham purna janmani naiti mame ti Practically, if you make preaching your whole life, you're good, good chance you'll go back home, back to Godhead, simply by that service. And Prabhupada made a nice statement too. He also said, if you're preaching, and somehow or other, you don't become perfect, but someone you preach to becomes a devotee, and that person becomes perfect, you go back home. <laughs> Simply because you made another person perfect, even if you don't make it. You can see how powerful, the, or how, what we say, influential this mood of preaching is. And it's our life and soul. I think we all know that, but just to emphasize these points, because sometimes we think, <clears throat> we start thinking, and those who are preaching, of course, Prabhupada said preaching in the age of Kali is very difficult because generally people are very materialistic and the tendency is that they are always looking for some kind of material benefit in everything they do, even religiously. When they come to spiritual life, they still are looking to gain something materially. but. If we can somehow or other <clears throat> be an instrument to attract them to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, that's preaching. There were the devotees in London were doing this really amazing program. They were going around with mic with a uh, tape recorder and going to people on the streets and saying, um, "Can you chant Hare Krishna?" <laughs> and they would say. And then they would record them. They'd say, Hare Krishna. And then they'd say, thank you. And sometimes they'd get them to say the whole mantra like that. Most people were favorable. Most people were favorable. They're just asking, just going up to... There was one devotee. <laughs> there was one devotee in Chicago. And I was there. And his, he was kind of a, what's the word? Uh, eccentric? <laughs> Eccentric, eccentric. <laughs> Eccentric. That means un, uh, does things in an odd way. <laughs> so he, he would go out every day and just ask 
and not ask, he would just like jump in front of people and say, Chet Hare Krishna. He wouldn't even go up to police officers. <laughs> And he would say to the police officers, can you guys chant Hare Krishna? I know you guys are busy, but come on. <laughs> he was just like, <laughs> you know, he didn't have any false ego. He just, well, of course he was a little bit, you know, like, some people didn't like what he was doing, but anyway. <laughs> but he did give people to chant Hare Krishna. So obviously, although it wasn't so, what we say, refined in the way he did it, <laughs> He uh, was able to uh, inspire people to chant. Mm -hmm. So so we try that sometimes, just to go out and try to inspire people to chant Hare Krishna. Because if they chant Hare Krishna just once, and then it's a, a, they're guaranteed a human form of life. So that's mercy like that. So there's different ways we can somehow or other think of how to inspire people to engage in devotional service. Now, the internet is big now. There's one devotee in our movement. I, I think his name is Sankarshana. He's also a spiritual master. He was preaching, he, he's a head of like 10,000 people on the internet that he was preaching to in different ways, just reaching them you know, with different classes or different, I don't know exactly what he was presenting but it was Krishna consciousness. So he developed a nice clientele on the internet. I also have a disciple, she's doing the same thing. She's reaching like 10,000 people, every, not every day, but I think five days a week. She's preaching to people in India, so she connects through the internet and she gets 10, at least 10,000 people to hear her classes. So yeah, and this preaching is big, it's going on, there's a lot there. There's a lot of people who know about Hare Krishna, but we have to keep, we have to keep going and keep going and keep going. In other words, when they get so tired of hearing Hare Krishna that they decided to become a devotee, <laughs> either one way or the other. There was one newspaper reporter, this was told me, told to me by Pragosh, this, he said, there was one newspaper reporter, he wrote an article. He said, the way things are going now, the Hare Krishnas are so into everything that someday we'll wake up one morning and we'll all be Hare Krishnas. <laughs> he wrote that in an article. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so that's uh, just like I remember in, in London, not in London, in, but in Bombay. The devotees were doing the, the Christmas marathon. So uh, they were distributing books in the Shivaji terminal in Bombay. <clears throat> and so one man, he came, he was approached by one book distributor and he said, no, no, I'm not interested. So he kept going. So as he was walking, another book distributor approached the same man. <laughs> Not knowing, he just happened to get approached again. And so again, he rejected and went on. And he went on and walked on a little farther. There was another book distributor there. <laughs> and this one, after he got the third time, he said, this has some, must have some meaning. All right, I'll take the book. <laughs> so <laughs> they can't get us out of their hair, you know. <laughs> so. It's been like, it was like that in Russia. That's why Russia was so, so successful in expanding their movements because the devotees were out there so enthusiastically preaching. Now it's become a more, lot more restricted. But uh, they were, devotees were out there with practically all day from morning to night distributing books and making. So yeah. This is how Krishna consciousness will expand more and more and more and more devotees get involved with the preaching in one form or another. And then Lord Chaitanya will be, as Prabhupada said, Lord Chaitanya will be very pleased to bestow his full mercy upon those who sacrifice everything for the sake of preaching because this, this is what's most needed in the world today. And Prabhupada, showed by his own personal example. 
He said, do what I'm doing. <laughs> now you figure that one out, do what I'm doing. So when the devotees first heard that, they were thinking, it's not possible. We, we can do what Prabhupada's doing. But Prabhupada clarified it. And he said, then I'm preaching, you should also. <laughs> that's what he meant. That's what he, that's what he was actually meant. Not that we can come up to the level of Srila Prabhupada. Of course, we can aspire, <laughs> and that aspiration will always give you a chance to improve. But ultimately, Prabhupada wanted every devotee to be somewhat. Sometimes in the old days, I don't maybe Maharaj remembers, they did, the whole temple would be out, and just be a pujari and maybe one other person for cook, yeah. Everybody else would all be out in book distribution, that's all. And that's what says here, that deity worship is, it's, an, it's, been, it's important, it goes on. But it's just, it's, uh, it's supportive to the whole process of, uh, de of Krishna consciousness in the form of outreach. This is our main business. Okay, so I'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Anything about preaching? Yeah. Don't forget the Baha. If you leave early, you're gonna, you're gonna miss it. Huh? You have to go now? All right, here, take it now. There you go. Move on to your friend there. Yeah. Hi, Krishna. Yes, question. Um, Prashna. 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 Uh, uh, yes. Uh, according to this situation in uh, the whole world, um, do you think this, um, how, I mean, they are restricting um, movement of preaching and harinams and... They're trying. This is lockdown is also part of clamping down on the Hare Krishnas. <laughs> they know the power of our movement. This movement is very powerful. I mean, even as it was said by one government, I think senator or congressman, he, he said it when we were preaching in America, he said, if this Hare Krishna movement continues to go the way it is, in 10 years they'll take over the whole government. Prabhupada quotes that. <laughs> This movement is fueled by Lord Chaitanya directly. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is behind this movement. And he's actually making it happen. It's up to us to surrender. And Prabhupada said, he said we could take over the whole world in 18 days, but he said you're not ready. <laughs> so when we come to the point of full surrender and willing to sacrifice everything for preaching, then uh, this movement will expand so fast that It'll just be everywhere. Because <clears throat> there's nothing else out there. Yeah, it's powerful. It's very powerful because it's directly enunciated by the Lord himself who came to show by his own example. Mm -hmm. And he showed in, when he was here when he did the Mahapra, no, no, I'm sorry, not that. When he marched on the, in the uh, Chan Kasi's home, how uh, when they had that civil disobedience against the Chan Kasi for trying to stop the Sankirtan movement, the Lord became like the Shringadev. <laughs> and then he gathered his devotees. And, but as was described by Vrindavan Das Thakur and Chaitanya Bhagavat, Millions of people came for that hurry now. <laughs> so the demigods are also there. So if we become really influential, they'll join the Hare Krishna Sankirtan movement too. They'll come out of their airplanes and come down and chant and dance with us. <laughs> But it's up to us. We have to purify ourselves and purify our, our desires. 
Then we question, you ask, well, what does that mean? Well, that, that, that we have to try to understand. We can see how influential it is already. Just by going out, we go out on Sankirtan, so many devotees take, so many people take books. Mm -hmm. They don't know they're going to get a book that day. Meet a Hare Krishna, and, and maybe even begin. Uh, there was one gentleman here came the other night from my class, and <coughs> he met the devotees on Hari now, and then he also joined in the kirtan for a while, and then uh, he heard more about us, and he came to my seminar that I gave online about a week ago, and then now he came to class. <laughs> And he wants to learn more. He's had some connection with devotees in Maribo also. So this is what we have to keep pushing. The more people have the opportunity, the more they'll become interested and purified. Everything is done by repetition. More kirtan, more book distribution, more, more harinams, more, 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 more. We're not so young like we used to be, right? So it's a little hard. The old days it used to be easy because all the devotees were like teenagers or in their 20s. And it was easy to, you know, to have that energy, to be enthusiastic, to stay up all night sometimes, get distributing books. <laughs> it's a little hard now as you get older, but still our movement's not an old movement. Not many of you are still young. Use that youthful energy before you lose it. <laughs> it's a gift. We used to always, I know that Maharaj, he was also like that. Even much more than most people, he would always try to do the utmost in everything. <laughs> it's like we always hope to see who could sleep the least, you know. <laughs> We did, it was one devotee, Vishnu John Maharaj. No one saw him go to bed at night and no one saw him get up in the morning because he was always the last one to take rest and the first one to get up. <laughs> Jayananda also was like that. So we, we used to also think, boy, we want to be like the ghost mommies where we don't have to sleep or eat and just, you know, get out there and just, you know, become fully Krishna conscious. It was like... Prabhupada inspired that, you know, more and more and more and more. So there was, a, there was that wave of, you know, spiritual energy that was developed. Of course, it was, we made a lot of mistakes in doing that, but still, the, 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 the desire was, was good. We just didn't know how to implant it. So what was your question again? <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> they can't they can they can try <clears throat> well if we go along with that they'll restrict us but we have to go against that like Lord Chaitanya taught the civil disobedience if they, if they try to stop you completely you just go out on the streets anyway Prabhupada said this is what they did in Melbourne in Australia, Sydney, I think it was, Sydney and Melbourne. They were arresting devotees. Prabhupada said, let them arrest you when you go to jail, you could just chant Hare Krishna. They got tired of arresting the devotees. And then people became sympathetic towards the devotees, and they made a lot of protests that you shouldn't arrest these people. Gradually, the whole thing changed. Yeah. They were arresting us every time we would go out for Hare Nam. Yeah. But by be, being persistent, because Lord Chaitanya is behind this movement, it's, I mean, he's going to make it happen. <laughs> so that, that means you have to have that faith. If you don't have that faith, you won't be able to do it. Do I have that faith? I don't know. <laughs> but I would like to have that full faith. 
Uh, it doesn't matter, nothing can stop this movement. <laughs> and it's Harinam Sankirtan that'll make the difference and book distribution and developing the qualities of a Vaishnava. So people, when they meet devotees, they are really uh, inspired to meet such people, you know. Yeah, so that's our movement. Okay, any other comments or questions? Maharaj, you want some sweet too? No, okay, that's right. I forgot. Sorry about that. <laughs> I have a piece of coconut from the top of the sweet. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.